in, uh, given that responsibility, he wasn't true Jew, but he was given that responsibility by, by Rome. And so he was in charge of keeping calm over this along with Pilate, who was the Roman governor of that area. Now, Herod, what did he think about Jesus? Earlier in scriptures, we are told that Herod was quite concerned about Jesus because he said, is he Elijah? Is he John the Baptist that has come back to life? Because he killed John the Baptist. So whether or not Herod was aware that Jesus was there, I'm sure he was, and whether or not the Pharisees had actually been told that they should give this message, that they really were concerned, I doubt that. But what is not, I doubt at all, is Jesus' reaction. And that's when we get to the second alliance. The second alliance is coming. But first, let's look at the last words of this text. Behold, I cast out demons, I perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I finish my course. What did he mean when he said, I finish my course? Well, part of it is shown in this next verse that comes after it and it says this nevertheless I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem let's take a close look at that that might be a little bit hard to follow he had just said I, I must do what I, but my course is, I must cast out demons, I must perform cures, and tomorrow and the third day, I was, and the third day I finish my course. Then he says, nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following. Again, not literal days, but the progression of things that were going to happen. His plan, his promise, his purpose here, which is tied with the second alliance, which is tied. Now, when you look at this last part that we just read, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. It's kind of an odd statement. One of the scholars that I read thought it was sarcasm. Would you think it is also sarcasm? Let me read it again. For it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. You see, Jerusalem was a holy city. Jerusalem was where perfection should be. If any place, any place on this earth, there should be perfection, it should be in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where the temple was at. Jerusalem is where the Ark of the Covenant was at. Jerusalem was the holy city. And yet, prophets, including Jesus himself, would be punished. And so whether it's sarcasm or not, it does tell us that Jesus knew that he must finish his course, that we must get to the second alliance, but that he must finish his course, but, the sec but, but in finishing the course, it would be in Jerusalem, and he would be perishing. Dust. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But we don't stay there. That also has to do with the second alliance. Jesus continues, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Behold, your house is forsaken, and I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, for those of you who are taking mental notes, all of you are, or those that are writing this down, let's break this down just a little bit. So he's saying definitely, as far as finishing a course, he is going to Jerusalem. All right? That Jerusalem, he knows, kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. And then he has this, I don't know, I would think, this unbelievable response of compassion. You know, Jesus is true God and true man, but here he says, Oh, how often I have prayed that I, as a mother hen, could collect you and put you under my wings. 
even the maggots. We said that the Herods were a maggot-like clan, but we are also maggots. Now, I can tell you that easier than I can tell myself, because I'm human. I don't like to think of myself as despicable. But the wages of sin is death. But thanks be to God. But thanks be to God. He has taken those wages of death off of our backs. And even though we are maggots without Christ, with Christ, we are changed. And with Christ, we are under his wings. We are under his wings. And so his compassion that he had for Jerusalem and for the people of Jerusalem and for all of the blockheads that were in Jerusalem, all of the people who refused to believe him, we have our own blockhead in us and we have our own blockheads, but yet, thanks be to God, Jesus loves us. How do we live life? We live life as Christ lived life, finishing our course. Finishing our course. And then that brings that last passage... And I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now that was said on Palm Sunday, so he might be making a reference to that. But it also is making a reference up to us as we approach the, our, our Lamb, our King. Blessed, we say, he who comes in the name of the Lord. Finish the course. And that brings us to the explanation of what I've been talking about as the second strange alliance. That alliance is between Jesus and you, Jesus and me. That alliance may not make a whole lot of sense, practical sense. It might not make a whole lot of sense philosophically, but yet it is there. It is there and Jesus has shared it and, and wants us to join and we have joined and we fight for that with the power of God. We fight with that. And we run the course. And we run the course. Lent is a time of reflection, of talking, of thinking, of understanding that we are wrapped in Jesus' arms. And this alliance is an alliance that is true and will never break, will never fall away. I believe it is helpful if I share this story. The story of when my mother was in her 90s, she couldn't hear very well, couldn't see very well, it was in a great extended care place in Concordia, Missouri. And we visited for quite a few years. And first my mom was walking and then later was in a wheelchair. And in the last days, still was coherent, told me, when I die, Larry, don't... don't uh, that's enough to make me cry, as it was then. But she knew where she would be, and she knew what was to be, and she knew what the course was, and she knew this alliance. And she shared it with me on one of the last days. And she asked me this question, and I can't, can't quite remember if she was just coming out of sleep, but perhaps she was. And she asked this question, Is, is Jesus here? Yes, Mom. Jesus is here. The second one. Do you love Jesus? Yes, Mom. I love Jesus. And then these words, these words which I share with you. Don't leave him. Don't leave him. Amen? Amen. And then as I put in my notes... She asked to sing, God loves me dearly, which in the German, which she had learned, is Gott, Gott ist die Liebe. It's fairly close. And it goes like this. God loves me dearly, God loves me dearly, grant me salvation, God loves me dearly, loves even me. Wow. Wow. Therefore, I will say praise again. And you see, I don't know the words, but she knew the words. God loves me dearly. And in his grace, and in his alliance, and in his power, 
We run the course. Do I hear amen? Amen. May God bless us as we continue to be blessed by Him.